You're holding your first Chromebook in your hands and have decided to try out a completely new operating system and enter new territory with Chrome OS. In this video, I'll give you the top 10 tips you need to know as a new Chromebook user that are guaranteed to get you started in the Chromebook world. Be sure to watch this video all the way to the end so you don't miss any important tips. Tip number 1. Start your new Chromebook for the first time. You may have wondered why your Chromebook doesn't turn on right after you unbox it, even though you press the power button. If so, you're like many others, because new Chromebooks always need to be plugged in and charged briefly before they can boot up for the first time. This so-called shipping mode ensures that a new Chromebook starts up for the first time in the hands of the new owner and that this is impossible beforehand, for example, during transport. You can also tell if your Chromebook is really brand new, or has already been started by someone else for the first time. Tip number 2. Create a Google account. Basically, anyone can use a Chromebook, even if it's not yours, in just a few seconds using guest mode and surf the web, for example. This can be handy in many ways, for example if you're visiting a friend and want to quickly check something. You do not have access to your friend's sensitive data in guest mode, which makes using someone else's Chromebook very safe for all parties. However, Chromebooks unleash their full potential when you create a Google account and use it to log into a Chromebook. By linking your Google account to your Chromebook, all of your apps from the Google Play Store, your wallpaper, and all of your settings are synced so that each Chromebook becomes your own Chromebook through Google Login, just like you're used to. If you also use Google Drive, you can also sync and work on your documents with the Chromebook. Locally stored documents will, of course, remain on the Chromebook where they were saved, but they can only be accessed with the Google account that also stored the files locally. If you get into it, you'll get a whole new attitude about your Chromebook, because especially if you have multiple Chromebooks, you can suddenly switch from the big 17-inch Chromebook at your desk to your small 11.6-inch Chromebook in just a few seconds and seamlessly continue working in Google Spreadsheets or Office 365. Everything is instantly the way you set it up and syncs automatically. So you're no longer locked into a single device, your Google account is at the center of Chrome OS, which means multiple family members can easily share a Chromebook, but everyone has their own settings, apps, and security over their data. Tip number 3, use Chrome OS plug and play. Chromebook newbies often wonder if you can plug this or that into Chromebooks. So I'd like to take this opportunity to point out that Chromebooks have excellent plug and play. This means that USB sticks, external SSDs, and microSD cards, for example, are immediately recognized by the Chromebook and can be connected, provided that the necessary port is available, of course. Printers can also be connected via USB, but even better via WLAN. WLAN-enabled printers can be connected and print jobs can be transmitted wirelessly within a few seconds. Older printers might have problems with compatibility, but my now 10-year-old Epson printer offers an absolutely smooth and perfect printing experience. Chromebooks usually also transfer image data via USB-C, so external monitors can be connected even without an HDMI port, and even classic devices like external DVD drives can be connected and used at least to a limited extent. With the help of a USB-C hub, you also have the option of expanding your Chromebook with many more ports and connecting many more devices to your Chromebook besides a mouse and keyboard. Tip number 4. Use the search function in the settings. If you've experienced the Windows world, you know that settings can be very confusing, complicated, and also hard to find. Chrome OS settings are very clearly and simply structured on the left side, but the fastest and easiest way to get around in the settings is to use search. If you want to set up your printer, just type print and the autocomplete will already show you the topics that are relevant for you, so you can jump directly to the printer setup. If you want to enable Linux on your Chromebook, just search for Linux and you're directly on the right menu item to enable Linux. This also brings us to tip number 5, extend Chrome OS by enabling Linux. Chrome OS already offers a variety of apps from the Google Play Store or Chrome Web Apps that you can use on your Chromebook. However, you can also install a full Linux operating system on your Chromebook with just a few clicks and thus install countless Linux programs like LibreOffice or GIMP and games like Minecraft in addition to the normal possibilities of Chrome OS. Note, however, that Linux programs and games require significantly more hardware performance than regular Chrome OS applications. Also, what kind of processor you have in your Chromebook plays a very crucial role in Linux compatibility. For example, games like Minecraft Java Edition can only be played on Chromebooks that have a powerful x86 CPU from Intel or AMD. 
On the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet Chromebook, for example, Minecraft Java Edition does not work because of its ARM CPU. Even though Linux can be used on a Chromebook especially with powerful and therefore more expensive Chromebooks, I would still recommend you to try out the possibilities of Linux on your Chromebook. You can find countless tutorials and explanations on how to use Chromebook that will help you get started with Linux on your Chromebook. Tip number 6. Use the free Google tools. Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, these are probably the most well-known tools for word processing, spreadsheets, and creating presentations. And yes, by now the Office package can also be used completely free of charge in the browser, I showed you how that works in the video, which I have now linked to you above. Since Chromebooks are, as already mentioned, very closely linked to your Google account, you should definitely take a look at Google's free Office tools. The word processor Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, and Google Presentations are very good alternatives to Microsoft tools. For example, you can pin Google tools directly to your clipboard and instantly access and work on your latest documents. Using Chrome flags, you can also link your browser tab directly to your Google Drive, so you can see your current projects and topics there as well. I highly recommend that you follow this video with my detailed beginner tutorials on Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, and Google Presentations if you want to learn more about these Google tools. Enabling Chrome flags brings me directly to tip number 7, learn the power of Chrome flags. The Chrome OS operating system is evolving at a very rapid pace. Updates are released every four weeks that include new features and improvements. As a normal Chromebook user, you are in stable mode and can use Chrome OS normally and without any complications. However, with each new Chrome OS version, new features are provided that are still in the testing phase. In this testing phase, Chromebook users can test out selected new features, which also helps developers with further development. Some features will then eventually be rolled out to the regular Chrome OS system and enabled for all Chromebook users. For other features, the decision is made not to introduce them and they disappear again. These new features can be activated via the Chrome flags. The Chrome flags are explicitly an experimental area, where in case of doubt problems can occur and in the worst case even the system and the data on it can be affected. So you should always be careful with the Chrome flags and only enable the flags that you understand what they do. Tip number 8. Learn keyboard shortcuts, touchpad controls, and tablet gestures. Looking at the Chromebook keyboard, you'll immediately notice that it looks a bit different than the keyboard on a Windows notebook or MacBook. Some keys seem to be missing, instead, you'll have a variety of keys on the top row with icons that are probably new to you. Also, you'll probably feel like there's no right-click on a Chromebook because no one told you that clicking two fingers on the touchpad triggers the right-click and opens the context menu. So I highly recommend my three videos on keyboard commands on the Chromebook, touchpad control with special gestures up to four fingers and also tablet control. Tip number 9. Take advantage of cloud gaming. If you love playing games like Fortnite, FIFA, or Rocket League, you no longer have to rely on an expensive gaming PC or console, you can easily play these games on your Chromebook. With GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming, there are two major cloud gaming providers that provide the processing power for the latest games on their servers and stream the image data and controls to your Chromebook. This means that you can already go into your browser with a very cheap Chromebook, log into GeForce Now, and start gaming within minutes. Of course, you have to own the games on Epic Games or Steam, for example, and the memberships are also basically paid for, but compared to the cost of a gaming PC, you can play the latest games with top graphics smoothly for comparatively little money. Tip number 10. Activate the login with PIN or smartphone. Yes, logging in with your Google password can be a bit annoying in the long run, especially if the password is very secure, and thus very long and complicated. But you have the possibility to easily activate the login with PIN on your Chromebook. In a few steps you can set a shorter PIN and alternatively log in with this PIN on your Chromebook and don't have to enter your Google password every time. If you have an Android smartphone, you can also link it to your Chromebook and unlock your Chromebook with it. Subscribe to this channel now if you don't want to miss a video of How to Chromebook from now on. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.